What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about some cool attacking techniques that are very effective and you can implement right away. This first one we touched on in the last video, pairing the Royal Champion with the Lightning Spell and the Earthquake Spell, uh, allowing her to one-shot a single Inferno with the ability, makes it a lot easier to clear a compartment because um, typically what happens is the single Inferno will take her out, before she can do a whole lot of damage, um, but that uh, two spell space investment really just gets her a lot more value, clears that entire area, um, getting you know several, many, many defenses there, and then uh, sets up a nice little queen charge. Um, so we're taking a look at Town Hall 13, Town Hall 12, Town Hall 11 today, and uh, showing you guys what you need to know to be successful attacking, focusing on some of these nice little uh, techniques that really have been working um, that we saw in this war here. This was a, uh, a nice attack showing one of By Forever's attacks. Um, opens up the multi-inferno, just great value from this queen charge. The single inferno was really there to try to stop this type of charge, but because the royal champion was used to neutralize it, um, opens up you know inferno tower, then comes over for the Town Hall, which, as I've said in the past, at Town Hall 13 especially, that Town Hall is just so important um, for a defender. It's one of your most important defensive buildings to keep very secure. So being able to take it out with the Queen Charge is definitely a huge advantage. Uh, it opens up the Warden's ability to be used, in this case, um, just over some defenses, allows that Lava Hound to last a lot longer with the ability on it. Um, and it has a nice little battle blimp coming in on the back end, freezes the queen and the scatter shot. Then I think out of the blimp um, is going to come a dragon and believe it or not, some sneaky goblins. Um, I, I'm not sure, maybe the town hall was, I assume the town hall was supposed to go down to the queen charge. So um, I'm not sure what to say about the sneaky goblins, but um, maybe he was thinking the town hall wouldn't activate, then would come back across and get it with the blimp. So I could see how, um, you know, have that layer of redundancy in the attack plan to make sure the Town Hall goes down. But in this case, the Sneaky Goblins just come out and, you know, break through a wall, do their thing. And uh, that's that's a wrap for uh, for this attack. So a nice hit, um, utilizing a lot of cool strategies uh, to make that, make that triple. Let's hop over to some of our attacks. As you can see, this was a CWO invite war, and they... Uh, they pretty much mopped the floor with us. They got a perfect war, um, all 120 stars, and we were, you know, several stars behind that. Um, probably could have. I, I don't think we fully dipped their Town Hall 12s right at the very end, just because it was already over. So we maybe could have gotten an extra star or two on the board, but um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't very close as things boiled down to the end. I think our Town Hall 12s kind of shot us in the foot a little bit. Um, this next attack, as you can see here. A nice little battle blimp just to target down the uh, what gets the warden, which is also a good value. The warden's tough on queen charges, and of course the scatter shot. And then take a look at this. I, I like the uh, yeti funnel. Um, I don't use it much myself, but I've been seeing it a lot, and maybe it's something I'll have to look into using more. The yeti is good because it can tank for a, a wizard or two to also help with more damage on regular buildings. But one of the uh, great things is you can see how many defenses went down just because of its uh, the yeti mites popping out. So. That is one thing to keep in mind, especially if you know there's Teslas in the area. The Yeti Mites are great against Teslas because the Teslas are low in hit points. Um, they don't have a lot of range. So the Yeti Mites are going to be able to exploit that and get them taken out while the Yeti itself takes out non-defensive buildings typically. So you can get a nice combination of just for 18 troop space, just dropping one of them and maybe a wizard behind, you can get a great funnel where otherwise, you know, a baby dragon, you know, your other options aren't going to be as good. Look to use the Yeti for the funnel. Um, but anyway, coming in with the Queen Charge, once again, Queen taking out the Town Hall on a Queen Charge has been a common theme for a lot of these attacks um, at Town Hall 13 that seem to be working. This base actually, you know, I got to be fair, it, it was pretty good against Hybrid. The Hybrid did work, but a lot of the Miners and Hogs are actually going to die. Um, it was just set up well for this part of the base to be hit with Hybrid. There's a bunch of Spring Traps. Uh, set up nicely. There's giant bombs in the right spots. Uh, so this is a good example of you know how you can defend hybrid pretty well. Just the springs are in the right place. I mean, I'm sure that they, the attacker was thinking this uh, might be used against them, but um, sometimes if the base is set up, the traps are not enough to make it uh, 
to make it undoable. And this is the case here where, yeah, the miners and hogs were taken out pretty effectively. A few miners were still up as we get towards the end here. Once again, a giant bomb, wizard tower, good splash damage there. But the royal champion's going to be able to finish off these defenses, and as well as the queen not going down the entire attack. Just makes this uh, a bit overwhelming for the base, gets it done, and we will move along to some Town Hall uh, 12 attacks. Let's see what we got here. Number 17. Yeah, this one was um, a queen charge hybrid as well. Yes, this is the correct base. So, um, was this the one I wanted to show though? Doesn't look like it. Maybe it was. No, this wasn't the one I wanted to show. My mistake. Um, I would edit it out, but I think we only lost like a minute or two. It was one of my attacks I wanted to show, and I must have written down the wrong uh, number there. Um, so that does happen from time to time. Bear with me. It's number 20. Um, it's me who's number 17. This is my Quint Sectatron account. And um, one thing I want to point out here is you can see I'm going to use a lightning spell to take down uh, the Inferno Tower as well as the Air Defense and Archer Towers. So that's the thing to look for. Um, at Town Hall 12, because at Town Hall 11 people are a lot more sensitive to protecting their Inferno Towers from the lightning spell. But at Town Hall 12, a lot of base builders are going to put the Infernos next to, you know, uh, low hit point defenses. So what this does is two things. Um, of course, it gets the good value of not just the Inferno Tower, but other damage dealing defenses, getting them taken out. But more importantly, it's creating a very nice, like, cutoff point for a funnel. In this case, pushing my queen to meet up with a P.E.K.K.A. Smash. So if you can use the lightning spell to... Um, take out buildings around the Inferno Tower and maybe drop, you know, two lightning spells on one side, two on the other side. Um, both of them, or all of them hitting the Inferno Tower in some way, but allowing it to take out, you know, Archer Towers on opposite sides. That all works fine. They don't have to all be dropped in the exact same spot. The point is that you're, um, you're getting great value with a lightning spell by just taking out a lot of real estate on the base, and it's only four lightning spells, one earthquake. So as a base builder, it's almost better to put like an expo next to your Inferno Tower because the expo can't be taken out. It requires an additional lightning spell. Um, so you're going to make them have to up the ante in terms of spells, which often they won't do. Um, so having the lower hit point buildings next to the Infernos isn't always the best play. Of course, you don't want to put your eagle next to one. Um, I took advantage of that in my other attack as I briefly popped into. You could see it was a lightning uh, dragon combo attack. But the point is, um, just, you know, make sure you're not allowing too much uh, lightning spell value, especially, uh, or I guess at Town Hall 12 too, in addition to Town Hall 11, which is the Town Hall people always assume and associate lightning spells being used at. Anyway, this one wraps up here. Fast forward through the end of it. Um, one thing, and I've said, said this a lot on the channel lately, but... I um, want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to hear it, is that as we go into, let's see, number 28. My Discord server, I'm doing some giveaways um, somewhat regularly, and we just had the giveaway of uh, some custom war bases, the same perk that all my Patreon uh, patrons get. So um, check that out, uh, and uh, check the Discord link is in the description, because I'll probably be posting another giveaway soon. I have some uh, Supercell merchandise. I'm still looking into how I'm going to do the shipping for it since I have it with me. It's not something I can have Supercell ship. Uh, but I'm going to try to get that uh, made possible so I can give away some cool merchandise for you guys. So be sure to uh, join the Discord because that's where I'm going to post updates and eventually post the giveaway its, uh, itself. Okay, so taking a look at this next attack here. This one... Um, Let's see, hopefully I wrote down the right number here. I, I think I did. Um, this was a nice uh, queen, little Sui hero, Lalo attack. Um, this is number 28. Yeah, this was the right one, I believe. Um, so just gonna Sui down the heroes. Got a ton of value with the lightning spell. Uh, took out the clan castle and a bunch of other buildings up on the north side of the base. And actually, I'm not sure, that th I, this attack doesn't look familiar. I'll be completely honest, but let's just watch it and see what happens here. Um, I am, I guess, a little bit too tired to properly number these attacks. But um, the queen doesn't go down. How is this one going to actually triple? 
We shall see. It's kind of like we're watching this live, even though we know what happens. Um, go ahead and go times two, just for sake of time here. Um, I assume there's going to be like a dragon or something in the uh, in the blimp there, because something has to take out the queen. Let's see what happens here. Nice freeze. Yeah, the dragon in there. And I guess that's a good point. It's it's pretty safe to, if you're doing a Lalo attack, and you know maybe it's a Sui hero, or even a queen charge uh, Lalo, but the defensive queen is not going to be a sure thing. Might as well bring that dragon if you plan on having your battle, or a, not necessarily a blimp, but in this case like the stone slammer. If it's going to be cutting across the base in the area the queen's in, not a bad idea to have a dragon in there just to be safe, or even a baby dragon. Um, something that can take out the queen. So hopefully this is the right attack here. Um, because I, okay, this is the correct attack. Um, sorry about that last one. So there, there is a uh, one of these like little tips, so to speak, that I wanted to point out in this attack, as I did with some of the other ones. First of all, once again, great lightning spell value. It's it's not always just the infernos. You can get it around the air defenses. Really, you know, as a base builder, you just have to always be scanning your base and not just be worried about inferno towers, eagle, clan castle, the traditional uh, defenses you assume and associate uh, value with. But also, as you can see in this example, um, air defenses, you don't want to put archer towers next to them typically. Um, just don't give too much lightning spell value in any one place. But what's going on here is going to, you know, suey down the heroes down at 6 o'clock. That's going to uh, create the other side of the funnel. Baby dragon kind of backing up that uh, one lightning spell usage. And that's going to create the other side of the funnel. And then one thing I love here is the way the base was kind of segmented into little uh, chunks that are easily uh, able to be taken out by each part of the attack. So what I mean by that is we have the uh, dragons and balloons coming in on the bottom uh, and then on the top the uh, stone slammer because there's nothing that can hurt it. Just an inferno tower on multi, a couple teslas, but the loons uh, go in there and kind of, you know, flesh out the seeking air mines so really that slammer is able to take out quite a bit before the e-drag comes out and then the e-drag works well because the town hall is right there lots of good chain value going off the town hall going on to other buildings so really the base was segmented off very nicely by lightning spells then the use of the heroes and the baby dragon and then from there just kind of uses the appropriate troop uh, combination on each part of the base um, so oftentimes there's especially at Town Hall 11 with less defensive buildings total and less uh, DPS uh, among those defenses, there's oftentimes little strips of the base where the slammer can get great value, uh, whether it's part of a Lalo attack, part of dragons, or even a different type of attack strategy. So keep your eye out for that. Um, plenty of troops left up at the end here. Very nice attack to alone with the umbrella in the name. Is that a mushroom? Nope, it's an umbrella. Um, cool name there. So, fast forward to the end. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and got something out of it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time. Bisectatron out.